Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,317. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,317 to 1,318 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great solution here for calculating total insulin units needed. And actually, this solution comes from one of the parents at my son's school. And what's so cool about this is it has the formula inputs for this insulin calculation. And then it has the formulas. But look at this, how it's set up the beautiful labels for each one of the inputs. So there's no ambiguity of what goes where. And it's color coded. Enter means that's the data we need to change regularly. This lavender is a number we may change occasionally. And then the blue cells are the formulas. Now, I love this. There's one, two, three shades of blue for different types of formulas. Now, in this video, we're just going to see how to use the formulas. But remember, Excel's golden rule. This solution illustrates this rule perfectly. And the rule is, if the formula input can change, put it into a cell and refer to it in a formula with the cell reference, and always label your formula inputs. And that's exactly what this did. In fact, it went one step beyond by having this awesome color coding. Now let's go over here and we're going to look at the formulas. Now the first calculation is total carbs and grams divided by carb ratio. So we click in the cell and we use the equal sign to start any formula. And since we want that number in cell D5, we simply take our cursor and click in D6, I mean D6. Then we use the forward slash for divide and click on the cell with our 50. When we hit Enter, instantly it calculates that. The beauty of this is now we have the label and the formula input. If later this is 65 when I hit Enter, instantly our calculation updates. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now down here we have to calculate BG correction, which is test minus target divided by the correction factor. So here I'm going to use an equal sign. And we need to force subtraction to calculate before division. So we use open parentheses. Now in this case, instead of using my mouse to click and grab a cell reference, I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to left arrow over. Sometimes if your cell references are closer, it's faster to use your arrow keys than to grab your mouse. Minus arrow, arrow, close parentheses. Now I'm going to use the division, and then arrow, arrow, arrow to the left, and then down arrow. And there's our calculation. Now I hit Enter. We need to add those, so I'm going to equal sign up arrow plus and then up arrow. There's our calculation, 1.53. But for this total insulin units, we always need to round down to the nearest 1.5. Well, guess what? There's a function that will always round down. It's called floor or round up. It's called ceiling. And we can give it a particular number it needs to round to. So equals F-L-O-O. -O. Now, in 2010, they added this dot math which differentiates how we move when the number is negative, either away from 0 or towards 0. We don't need that in this calculation. So I'm going to use the good old floor, which always goes down. In our case, we're never going to have any total insulin that's minus. So that's why we're using this one. All right, the number, I'm going to arrow, arrow up, and then one to the left, comma. And then the significance, I type. 0.5, close parentheses, and there's our calculation. Now let's go ahead and test the formula inputs. I'm going to change this blood glucose to 110. When I hit Enter, oops, there's a problem with our little model here. We cannot enter this as a negative number down here. If it turns out that it's negative, our test is less than the target, we need this to be 0. So let's put this in edit mode. I'm going to use the F2 key. Now, what's our trigger for when it should be 0? When that amount is less than 0. Anytime we have a formula, or better yet, a cell that is going to contain one of two things, in our case, we either want the calculation if it's positive or 0. Anytime a cell contains one of two things, that's the perfect use for the if function. So I'm going to type if, open parentheses. 
Now, it always needs a logical test. That's something that comes out true or false. So I'm going to say any time that is less than 0. That's our logical test. Notice once we use a comparative operator like this, that means the formula element, that whole little bit right there, that only comes out true or false. Now, the rest of the if, after you have your logical test, comma is simply what do you want to put in the cell if it's true? Well, if it comes out true, that means this is less than 0. We want 0. That's the value to put in the cell when that first part comes out true. Now we come to the end, comma. Otherwise, the value if false, well, now watch this. I'm going to have to very carefully with my I-beam cursor copy that, Control-C, come to the end, and Control-V. That formula works. But I want you to notice something, that in order to get this formula to calculate, it actually calculates this once, then decides whether to put a 0 or recalculate this again. Type a close parentheses, which will work perfectly in our case. When I hit Enter, now we get the correct amount. That number was less than 0, so now there's a 0 in the cell. Now if I change this back to 150 and hit Enter, instantly the IF function dumps the formula there. Now that is all working fine, but I want to show you one other cool thing here. This whole thing right here works perfectly, but what if we did it a different way? Because realize that little bit right there, it's either coming out positive, 0, or negative. Now I'm going to Control C to copy that formula element and come over here and show you an alternative way to do this. We can actually use the max function. The max always picks the biggest number. Well, guess what? The max can have multiple arguments. So I'm going to Control V to paste that. Remember, that either comes out positive, 0, or negative. So that's one option, comma. The other thing that the max is going to look at is a 0. Now, think about this. When that comes out negative, 0 is the biggest number. When it comes out positive, then that is the biggest number. So this is an alternative way to dump a number into a cell. Unless the number is below 0, then please put 0. And now when I hit Enter, it works. By the way, that's number formatting. If I come up here and increase the decimals, they're exactly the same. Now when I come over and test this, 110, instantly both these little formula elements give us the same thing. And there is our 1. I'm going to Control Z to leave it on 50. All right, formulas for an insulin calculator, including the if, the max, and the floor. Thanks to Excelers all around the world who follow Excel's golden rules and make beautiful solutions like this. All right, we'll see you next video.